Welcome back to the repair bench. Today we have a centipede board by Atari. And I've made myself a loom up. And that's one of the things that I always dread about working on a new board, making a loom. Uh, I'll zip tie it down in a bit when I've made sure everything works. I don't have a comparison board to work against. So I am literally playing blind. Uh, I'm going to show you what it does when we power it up. So there's the board, scope's all set up, there's the loom plugged in, got the flute ready in case we need that, and there's the monitor. So switch on, and I've got garbage on the screen. So we need to investigate what's going on with that. Well, there's several ways we can do it. Uh, one is to see if the CPU is, re uh, is watchdogging. So let's take, let's take our scope probe and pop it onto the reset pin of the 6502 and we can see from that pattern there that the watchdog is repeating itself which means that uh, for whatever reason some acknowledgement an, an acknowledgement signal in the CPU is not writing to an area of RAM which resets the counter for the watchdog and it was a way that they had the engineered in of basically saying hey if the game stalls try and reboot it see what happens hopefully it'll come back to life and sometimes it will work and sometimes it won't. Sometimes what you get is it crashes later on in the program, so if it gets stuck, if it reboots, at, least, at the very least your less gifted players would be able to uh, start a new game and maybe play the first level or two levels or something like that before they get naturally killed, but your hardcore players, yeah, it's kind of indicative, you know, you might have a, a, a problem with a ROM later on with some data and it crashes the CPU, so it would cause it to reset. Anyway, well, what can we do here? So we need to find out if we have ROM uh, access going on. Uh, on this particular board, there are ROM test points over here. We've got ROM 3, which is stuck high. And we've got ROM 2. So my scope just takes a second to catch up. Yeah, and ROM 1. And ROM 0. And none of them seem to be moving much. So, well, if it was anything else, what I'd be doing is I'd be looking around the, uh, the pins on the schematics for... Uh, finding the addressing. So let's just bring up the schematic on this one. Uh, is that it? Yeah, it is. So here's the CPU. Over here we know we've got reset. I've already checked that we've got clock and the fact that we've got garbage on screen uh, is very, uh, very good sign that we have all our clocks and sync signals as well. Now that's not to say that mm, some, of the, some of the other triggers for, um, can cause problems but I'm seeing a reasonably uniform looking screen even though it's got garbage and doing nothing. So I'm pretty, without going that far, I'm going to start at the microprocessor and work my way out. Um, so the address lines here um, all go through uh, some buffers and the data bus, similar to how missile command was in, was in a previous video, we've got a return buffer and also some data that's straight on, onto the microprocessor bus as well, onto the 6502, so there's your D0 to D7, and you have a uh, 245 here, and that's basically controlling a buffered data bus, and you've got addresses up here. So, first thing we've got to do is have we got any activity on those address buffers? Well, if we didn't have the fluke, what we'd do is we get um, a logic probe, either a logic probe or a, an oscilloscope probe, and we'd go around all the pins that were available on these 245s, and we'd look for what was moving. And we'd see that we have pretty much not, not really a lot going on. So, I wonder what... Uh, oh, we've got some stuff there on the, uh, on the upper ones. I don't know, maybe not. Okay. Not a lot really going... There's some, a few signals going on on the upper ones. Okay, well, my first thing I would probably want to check is reseat a few of the things like CPU and uh, the ROMs and things like that. So let's just do another reset. Let's see if any change. Oh, so I've got something slight, got slightly different garbage on the screen this time. And... I'm just looking around this 244 um, for any anything that's going on. Uh, I'm literally just jumping from pin to pin with the scope tip. Um, trying not to short anything out, I'm literally sort of lifting off. That's the clocking signal, that. So I've got some stuff going on on that one. Hmm, okay. Uh, it's all going to the CPU. 
that is quite interesting. That's the, um, some of the clock generation signals. Yeah, not really seeing a lot going on. Oh, and, and regular clock. Hmm, not seen any data bus or address bus activity. I wonder if the CPU's died. Let's take the CPU out. So let's go in that one. Right, I have put the Fluke 6502 pod here onto the CPU socket on the board and booted it up. And look what we've got. We've got some garbage and we've got some reset. Can you see it flickering? Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a ROM test. So ROM, uh, I've got the details of the ROM uh, here, like I always do. I've done this before. I'm going to read ROM 0, so 2000, 2027FF, uh, uh, there, with a signature of BFA2. So, uh, BFA2. Ah, that's interesting. It's telling me I have an address error at 2020 loop. Ooh, that's going to be interesting. Press bus test. Ah, address bits 5 and 6 tied. Well, what do you know? Right, let's have a look. So 5 and 6, uh, schematic. Now, I don't know whether this works from 1 or from 0. So I'm going to assume that it's working from, uh, hopefully, from, from 1. Even if it's uh, working from, uh, sorry, from zero. So if it's working from zero, it's zero, one, two, three, five and six there, five and six. Right, okay, these go down through this two, four, four. Hmm, let's have a look here. So what have we got? Uh, that goes in 15 and 13. So it's saying the tide is the chip. Is there something wrong with that chip? Just to another run, run your UT. Yeah. Right. Let me just try something, sometimes works. There's your 13, 14, 15. So it's saying 5 and 6 tied. And I'm set up to, to go into test mode as well, if possible. Uh, so look, so just looking down here at the connector. 10, 11, 12, 13, yeah, 13 on the lower. On the lower is test. Double check the mark here on there. Yep, I am. Alright, well, what can we do next? Uh, let me get the meter. See if it's uh, telling me that there's definitely a short on those two pins. Okay, if there is, what is it? Right, well, as you can hear, that's screaming. And that's. 13 and 15 on that uh, on that 244 connected together. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to lift the uh, fluke connector out and then put myself back onto. Yeah, I've got a, I've got either a, a line short or something problem. So it's either that chip that's shorting or something underneath that socket. There's only one way I can really find out, and that's lift the chip out at the very, very least to start with. So that's going to be first. That's going to be job number one. Take that uh, 244 up and then test it out to circuit. I have removed that 244, and I'm just checking those two pins, and I still have a short across those two pins. Right, so the only, pro only place it can possibly be now is underneath this CPU socket, which is looking a bit, a bit cruddy anyway. So, uh, okay, let's... Uh, Let's pull up the CPU socket, it's the only place it can possibly be. Because that, uh, that line doesn't go anywhere else other than between there and there. Um, CPU socket's now been lifted out and I don't seem to have uh, that, that problem anymore. At least it didn't look like that. So let's have a look. 13, 14, 15 for that one. This is almost impossible to do one-handed. Uh, let's uh, just pop you down there. And put those two probes into. Oh, still, no, nope, I still have a short. Ah, interesting. Ah, it's intermittent. Oh, this is going to be the worst counter. Right, this is one where, as I flex the board, that's when it gets uh, it's something underneath the CPU 
socket. Okay, I'm going to have to get the microscope, the macro lens out, and uh, and go over that and see where I can find it. So at the moment it's clear, but if I tap the board or move the board insert, I can get it to come back. Okay, must investigate further. Okay, so after a good clean down with IPA, uh, my 13 and 15 are now no longer shorting together. So I'll put a socket in there and put the old chip back in. I've tested it in the in the chip tester and it says it's fine. And I'll put a brand new CPU socket in. I'm not going to muck about and put that old slightly tarnished one up. It's only I'm just asking for trouble there. Uh, let's see where I get to after this. Hopefully, um, hopefully I might get a bit further and the game may boot up. We don't know. Let's uh, let's pop the two components back in and see what happens. Okay, here we are. I've fitted a socket for both the CPU and for that LS244 and I'm just measuring that and I'm getting absolutely no short on it now. I seem to have cleared the fault so let's pop the chips back in, fire it up and see what happens. We'll, we'll test it on the fluke first and see where we uh, see where that takes us to because we may have some more debugging to do. Okay everything's connected. Set it back up. Just double check my uh, alignment here on this connector because I'm going to use a 15 pin instead of a 12 because they use a 2x12 uh, at that point there. Uh, that's fine. So both of them say top facing up. I've got that clip onto there and onto there, which is the test mode of it. Aha, straight away, test mode. Perfect. Now then, somebody's you're gonna say to me, are you using the joystick on that? Hidden hidden feature. And sounds working. And there you go, I can oscillate the background colours and everything. And if I change that. I'm doing, yeah, all the motion objects are all okay. So, well, that's all right. Uh, let's disconnect test mode. And the game comes up into its native mode. And it's setting to free play at the moment, which is good. Let's press start. Well, so the, so the game works now on the fluke, which is great. So let's pop its original CPU back in. So I'll just pause the camera and cut away and uh, I'll do that. Pop its CP original CPU and hopefully uh, the only problem was that short on the bus. And there's a new CPU in, but... Oh dear. So I'd say whoever did 6502. All right, well, get one out of the stock and uh, pop one of those in. New 6502 out of stock pile. Into there. And it's the only component can be possibly wrong. There we go, and it runs. I can't play one handed. Right, I'm going to look, just reset it and leave it running there. So as far as I'm concerned that's that repair done. Uh, that turned out to be a bad CPU and a short on the address bus that was causing it trouble. So I'll leave this now on test for a couple of hours and see how everything gets on. But yeah, that's uh, that's another one fixed. Uh, and they can whiz that back on the floor at the arcade club. I'll tidy up my loom for the next time I have either an Astra, a centipede or a millipede to look at because it's the, it's the same looming, uh, which is great. So, uh, that's it for this video, hope you've enjoyed it, uh, please if you like watching this kind of video um, or you just want to see more of what the kind of thing that we're up to which is uh, Ben's bit on a Wednesday talking about uh, uh, his retro rambles uh, with the consoles and things like that and you've got more repair vids coming from me and talky bits and stuff to do with demo scene and things like that, there's tons of stuff coming up so don't forget to hit the old subscribe button if you haven't, that'd be a great time for you to do it right about now um, and don't, don't hesitate to share the content 
content out to uh, anybody who you know who might be interested or just you know be proud and say hey you know I like this stuff um, maybe other people will so stick it on your you know do a share on YouTube do a share on Facebook share on Twitter um, you know uh, do engage with us also do do uh, do talk to us in the comments below um, I personally answer the comments off all the videos Ben answers all the ones off his um, and uh, you know do do get in involved now a little bit of uh, a little bit of YouTube here, and uh, and also on Facebook. Uh, I'm going to be stopping putting the videos up on Facebook and just linking directly to them. Uh, it was a bit of a bit of a kind of a a, a trial more than anything. Um, it uh, I need I want to build the the YouTube channel because I know some things are coming up in Facebook and I'm probably I don't know whether I'm going to depart it or not. We'll still have the page there, but I'm just probably not going to push as much content into it as I have been doing. So this this is probably more where you're going to find information, but with Facebook basically acting as kind of a periphery to it and on the website. And you know, new website coming too. Right, anyway, until then, um, we'll, uh, we'll catch you all later.